aquí. Okay. 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 I think now it's fine. We can see your your slides for it, and it's uh, mostly in full screen. I hope people attending uh, online also can see the slides. Yeah, it's fine for us. Okay, sorry again for this technical issue. So, uh, uh, luckily, you can uh, carry on the call. Okay, thanks. Okay, so today I will introduce uh, how BORREF uh, has adapted NF Core as a standard for the, for the reference pipelines and specifically for the ATAC-SIC analysis pipeline. <coughs> uh, Okay, so first of all, I will present myself for or for those that doesn't know me, that is <laughs> most of the people. So I'm Espinosa Carrasco. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at Notre Dame's lab uh, at the CSG at, at Barcelona in the Comparative Bioinformatics Group. And we are involved in a uh, work package three, which is called Tools, Data and Pipelines Hub for Bioinformatics Analysis. So mostly it's uh, all the bioinformatics or a lot of the bioinformatics that take place in the coordination of, of the bioinformatics efforts in the project. And I hope I'm, I'm helping Cedric to, to lead this work package. Uh, and yes, and this is small. This is, uh, I'm showing the building of the CRG, which is nicely close, uh, close to the beach <laughs> where I work. Okay. Uh, so yes, the, 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 let's start. So here I have a, a slide where I list some of the uh, characteristics of bioinformatics workflows. So they, they are data analysis applications that use to stack information from very large data sets. So a typical case is genomics. Sometimes they are very easy to parallelize because they can, as said here, spawn 100 uh, to 1,000 jobs over a cluster. So for instance, you can think of and you see uh, parallelized in problem when you have several chromosomes and you can just uh, do the same tax for the different chromosomes in parallel. They also uh, are, are normally compound for a mashup of many tools and, and scripts. And this makes them that they have a very complex dependency trees and configuration, meaning that if for some reason there is an update in one of the libraries that you have the tools, uh, is the non? Uh, you do this update, and then everything it's it's broken. So it's a very fragile ecosystem. <clears throat> and here I'm showing you just an example of one of these uh, pipelines. This is from uh, the the companion pipeline, uh, which is published in in this paper, uh, and it's for the for the annotation of of parasite genomes. So for instance, as Lesmania and so on. And, and you can see how there are many dependencies in this in this uh, graph showing you the different processes and the relationship between them. So there are processes where everything uh, has to be recapitulated, so merged. Then sometimes things are again split, and you have a lot of relationships. So this is a quite complex uh, DAC. And this is just the numbers of, of this pipeline. It has a lot of moving parts, as I said. So it has 70 tasks, 55 external scripts, and 39 software tools and libraries. And if this is not enough, uh, this, well, this paper showcase that to reproduce a, a result for a typical computational biology paper, the car requires 280 hours. And this shouldn't be the case because this is like uh, one almost two months to reproduce the the, the analysis of, of, of one of the of one bioinformatics paper. Uh, it should what we will, we will expect is that we just, uh, it took I don't know maybe two or three days in, when you start it or even less no so that you can press a button and get the the result. But two months <laughs> it's not very reasonable. Uh, yes, uh, I think. 
uh, this well, this slide was shouldn't be here. I think I I mix <laughs> the 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 presentation. Let's see if okay. And if it is not not, uh, we have another problem is that uh, the same application deployed in different environments produce different results. This means that if you run your pipeline in one uh, operating system or in a different one in macOS, let's say in your HPC cluster or in a, a Linux uh, operating system, uh, you get results. And this is nicely showcased uh, in this paper, which is the paper that introduced Nextflow. What you have here is actually using this, uh, this pipeline. Uh, it was run in, in different uh, operating systems. So in macOS uh, with Amazon Linux, in macOS Anif, uh, native, sorry, and in Amazon Linux native. And you can see how you have difference in, in the notation that it's provided by the pipeline. So here is the same uh, thing, but in case I'm just showing you some of these annotations. So you see how when you annotate uh, with the pipeline using the macOS system, uh, the macOS operating system, you get dif a different annotation for what you get when you are using Amazon Linux. But this, uh, what the paper shows is that by using Nextflow and, and, and so forth containers, this is solved. So in this, you are getting exactly the same annotation. It's not that this is the real annotation or the boot annotation. It's, that, it's just that your computational result, it's, uh, it's reproducible. This is also important because if not even your uh, computational result, it's uh, reproducible, then uh, it's time you run the pipeline or in a different system, you will get a different result. And this is uh, the same thing, but in this case is for, for transcript quantification uh, and differential expression using two typical tools, Callisto and Sloth. So running them in different operating systems, different results. What well, if you run it with Nexo and Docker, uh, you get use, uh, you get this in these two different operating systems, you get the same results. Okay. So which are the Nextflow? So Nextflow it's a it's a workflow uh, manager. There are several of them, but here I'm listing some of the uh, main features of Nextflow. So Nextflow, it's polyglot. This means that you can reuse any of your uh, Bash, Python, or R script that you have, and, and you can just plug them in, in your uh, Nextflow line without uh, needing to rewrite them. It also allows you to, to uh, sandbox dependencies in containers or in environmental, environmental uh, um, uh, uh, now I, I won't say managers like uh, Conda. Uh, yes, so this is very important because as you have seen and as I have seen before, said before, uh, if your tools are not in the same environment with the same libraries and dependencies, they probably will give you results. And software containers, what allows you to do is to actually isolate uh, sandbox your tools with its libraries to make them work in a reproducible. I will not enter in the computational details of, of this, but this is the idea. It uses this data flow programming paradigm. It's also not very relevant, but the, the idea here is that the, the data uh, is the one that indicates how the processes have to be run. And actually, this is very nice because parallelization, the, the way the parallelization it's quite easy and you don't have to take much care of, of it, let's say. Uh, then it's a very, it's integrated with version control tools uh, like, or managers like GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. And it supports multiple platforms. And this is important because this way you can, uh, your pipelines can be uh, port one uh, computational environment to another one. For instance, you can start Run your pipeline for testing in your local machine, but that you can go to your HPC uh, 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 environment to, to run it, or you can also run it in, in the cloud with the same code because uh, uh, well, this, this, well, it, it's, this can be done because the logic of the workflow and the logic of the configuration are separated. And these are the main uh, ideas uh, of, of or the main of Nextflow, and in this perspective, published uh, last year, there is a comparison on this table of different workflow managers. 
you can see how Nextflow it's quite good in all of the categories that they have put in this in the stable. Uh, only the ease of use is not very not so nice. Uh, it's very comparable with instance snake make, and this doesn't mean that a snake make or other work from eyes are, are not good. They are also very nice. And the main idea is that you should, if you are uh, doing bioinformatics yourself, you should use work from managers and not uh, bash scripts and uh, and so on, because they will allow you to have all these uh, features that I uh, we are uh, seen before. Uh, and yes, so also you have here Galaxy that has been discussed, which is, for instance, more uh, a graphical interface that it's easier for people not so uh, used to work with my informatic tools. But what I would say that makes Nexo very strong it's its community. Uh, since well, not since the beginning, but just probably I can see even from from the beginning of the development of, of Nexo, uh, there has been a very nice uh, support community that have been using it. And, and maybe just to say you can think that this is not so important, but many of the nice features that Nextflow have and that has been developed along the years are because of people developing their pipelines uh, and needing these features for, for their own, own work. So I will discuss a little bit more what it's NF Core. So NF Core, as I mentioned, it's a, a community of, of developers and users. It provides you to, with helper tools to, to run uh, or develop your, your bioinformatics pipelines that are in a, uh, in a Python package that I will discuss also a little bit. Uh, they, they, and of course, it's also a set of guidelines. So it's a, a standard and it's a curated set of analysis pipelines built using Nextflow. Okay, so as I mentioned, for instance, community has uh, created a, a, a package of tools that allow you to, to create and to run NF Core pipelines, and we will be using during the, the tutorial NF Core tools, so you will see how, how, they, how they work. Uh, for those that not, there is a very nice, uh, that are not following the tutorial or the workshop, uh, there is an, a very nice tutorial online, the NF Core website, so you can always follow them. Uh, and here I just mentioned how they can be installed. Um, and then said it's kind of a standard. And why there is this, this standard? So this standard or these guidelines to, to develop the pipelines that are in the NF Core repository is we aim that these pipelines follow fair principles, meaning that they are findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible, or that uh, gives uh, all results that they are there to current best practices in terms of computational reproducibility and interoperability. We also want that these pipelines guarantee its portability to different computational infrastructures and that they enable a set of common features between pipelines. For instance, one of the easiest things is that they are run in a similar manner, meaning that to start working with the ATAXI pipeline, it will be easy for you to also run the RENASIC pipeline uh, because the the main uh, ideas of how to and them are very similar. Also, the documentation is structured in the same manner, and the structure of the pipeline is is similar. Okay, so just to okay, one, showcase one of these uh, guidelines. So we uh, use uh, we use containers that are in bio containers. So in bio containers, uh, builds automatically uh, Docker containers for all bio packages. So, and yes, for those that doesn't know, Biconda is a channel for the Conda package manager specialized in bioinformatics software. So it means that many or almost all of the informatics tools are in Bioconda and we get these uh, containers, Singularity and Docker for free that we can use in our pipelines. Okay. So yes, just to show you, there are, uh, for this is the NF Core website. And here are listed the, the pipelines that are available. It's just a snapshot. There are already 41 released pipelines, 25 under development, and six that are archived because they are not supported uh, anymore. One of those is the attack seek, as we will see during the presentation. And given all these 
features and, and high standards, computational standards that NFCore provides, provide, uh, we in BOFREC and in other Eurofan projects have decided to use NFCore as a standard for the reference pipelines. So um, the reference pipelines are the reference are the pipelines that we want that they uh, are established as a, uh, something that the community can use in, in the long term, not only within the project. Uh, and uh, yes, so one of those, for instance, is the ATAXI pipeline. And there are three strategies for, for adopting a core. What we have been doing during the project is that there are some uh, pipelines that were missing some features in NFCore that we need. What we have done is that we have been uh, contributing to NFCore and then we have released, released a, a new NFCore pipeline with, with a DOI, uh, with a date with the features that we uh, needed. There is another strategy that we have used, for instance, for the Elastic pipeline. In this case, we develop uh, a, a sub workflow that was meant to annotate, uh, uh, um, uh, to, to, to run a string type that was a thing that was not um, uh, in the original pipeline. But in this case, instead of um, releasing a new version of the NFCore pipeline, we just kept this in our own repository, and did in the WordPress repository, and did a, a release uh, in, in the WordPress repository. This is probably not a very good strategy because we have realized or that uh, if the main NFCore pipeline gives some updates, this cannot be taken in the in the WordPress pipe, pipeline. And then another strategy was to uh, create a, an extra line that tries to uh, follow most of the standards of NFCore, and this is the case of the NFCage uh, pipeline that has been developed by, by Mazdaq. Uh, all of these pipelines and will be, so even the ones that are in NFCore will be also in our uh, repository, in the Buffer repository as a fork. And yes, so I mentioned before, one of the pipelines that need uh, some updates for the project was the NFCore ATAXIC pipeline. I think I have not to, to, to summarize much of this because so give this background because already Anne Sophie has uh, explained uh, how a tactic works. But yes, so yes, I will keep on. Uh, this is just some figures from the uh, ATAXIC uh, pipeline. So the, the number of clones along, along the, the that we got, there is a lot of, of them, so meaning that people is actively using it. It has been originally developed by Harshil Patel, uh, which is an NFCore core member. Uh, and yes, this is just to show a timeline of the uh, ATAXIC pipeline a long time. So here are several of the NFCore pipelines. So for instance, one of the uh, most widely used is the RNA seq that it has been uh, released in 2018 in more or less post. And here you can see where uh, attack seq was released first. It was in April 2019. And here you have the timing of the releases of the attack pipeline itself. So last release was this one that was just an update to be able to use Conda, but soon we'll have uh, the release of version 2.0 that will be the one that uh, Buffrec has been working on. Yes, so it's, uh, so the version of 2.0, it's uh, still in development, but almost there. It has been, uh, it has been me and, and Bjorn, <laughs> Bjorn and me, sorry, that has been working on, on it. And we plan to, actually we wanted to, to make this before the workshop, but probably will be in, if uh, we couldn't, but it will be in one or, or two weeks, uh, I would say. Okay, and here you have a, an overview of the NFCore ATAXI pipeline. So this is uh, how version 2.0 will work uh, already here. Uh, so we have uh, here at the beginning, uh, <coughs> So, of course, the input of the, of the pipeline are FASCO files uh, coming from the 
from a tag seek. Uh, so we have some quality tools using FastQC, uh, adaptive teaming with Catadapt. Then again, as you see uh, on the trimmed uh, files. And then uh, we have the alignment steps. Uh, we can choose between several aligners, so BWA, which was the default one, the unique one uh, in the previous release. We can also use Chromat, which is a, a, a new aligner that uh, it's meant for chip seek and attack seek uh, data, and that's why we included it. And then we can also use boot or star. Uh, then after this alignment step, we have uh, a, a merging uh, of uh, with Picard at sample level, meaning you have a uh, sequence, uh, a sample more than one once for, for increasing the coverage, it will be merged at this, this step. And then we have some, some filtering. So we filter band files by duplicates, uh, blacklist regions, uh, mitochondrial DNA, DNA, and yes, and maybe there is another one that I'm missing, but yes, mostly. Uh, then we have uh, the, uh, we mark, uh, yes, uh, mm -mm. we, yes, which I said it matching, I guess is, this is uh, merge applicates with, uh, with uh, Picard, uh, then, um, Sorry, I'm missing it with Picard, yes, and uh, alignment, alignment level, uh, quality control with Presec and, and Picard. Uh, yes, this is alignment quality control with Picard and Presec. Yes, I, 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 yes, <laughs> I said wrong. Okay, after the filtering, we have uh, the alignment quality control with Picard and Presec. And then uh, we have um, uh, deep tools uh, uh, fingerprint plot and redistribution profiles. Uh, so, ah, yeah, okay, sorry, I thought there was a, a sound. Uh, then we have attack B uh, 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 quality control. Uh, attack B is a, an, a tool specific for attack C quality control and visualization. And then we have uh, peak calling with max two. Uh, we can call broad and narrow peaks. Uh, then, we have, then we have also this step with Homer for peak annotation relative to genomic uh, genomic figures. Uh, then we have uh, vet tools uh, used to generate uh, big big uh, big weak uh, files to be, to be able to to visualize them in IGB. Uh, Fewer uh, counts so that reads uh, we can see reads by by peak in consensus peaks. And then we also have uh, DC2, which it's only used to uh, show uh, quality quality control by using the the PCAs. Not really. We are not doing the differential expression analysis because we think this is something that should be uh, done downstream by the user uh, because you have to. Let's yes, it's it's difficult to um, let's say implement a way to, a default way to do it without people thinking that this is just a magic recipe that will uh, give you uh, the results that you're looking for. As I say, there is also uh, an IGB process to generate a visualization with IGB. And then uh, there is this multi QC report, which is a, a nice report that uh, shows many of the results of the tools that we have been using during the, the pipeline. Uh, and then, uh, yes, there's a, another round, let's say, of these uh, processes after merging uh, the, the BAM files, in this case, across replicates. So before I was saying that this is a merging uh, uh, at the level of sample, in this case is uh, a merging at the level of, of replicates, and, and then we perform again all these processes. Okay, so this is more or less the overview of the pipeline. So, which are the, the updates and new features that we have included in, in this new uh, the version two that we are going to release? So the main thing was to port the pipeline to SL2 syntax. The SL2 syntax is the modular syntax of Nexo. Nexo was before was not modular, but now <coughs> uh, it's it's modular, and you can use of, of these modules, and, and it's very nice because 
uh, want to have a model that it's implemented for one of the pipelines you can use in any of the NFCore pipelines. So we have tools for for installing this model. So it's much easier to maintain a pipeline with this new uh, syntax. We have uh, updated the files containing the blacklisted regions to be filtered. So the blacklisted regions are regions that are known to be difficult to align and and we were using the old bed uh, files containing these blacklisted regions. So we have been update, uh, we have updated it. We have uh, add this uh, option to uh, use new alignment. So boot type two, star and clone map. Also, we have uh, refactored uh, the way the effective genome size is calcul calculated. So max genome size parameter that is used uh, by max. Uh, tool for calling the peaks, uh, and now uh, we have updated the values in, in the configuration files, but also there is a process that if you don't provide any, if you don't provide this value, it can, if you provide the, the, the length of your reads, it can calculate it by, for you the, the max G size. We have also modified the, the way the input is now provided to the, to the pipeline. And we have, as I mentioned before, we have removed the differential expression analysis from the consensus peak comparisons of the pipeline. And of course, we have been fax, uh, fixing some, some bugs that were reported. Okay. Uh, why is it not moving now? Okay. So yes, this is just mentioning a little bit which word is, uh, these updates. So this I already commented. So we were uh, we were updating the, the blacklist. And if in case that you are still using the previous version, I will uh, I will recommend you to to use this letter minus minus blacklist to so that you can provide the the new list. But in the new uh, pipeline, this will be uh, already updated by default. Then uh, as mentioned before. Uh, we can now uh, we provide for some of the genomes these MACD sizes uh, depending on the read length. But also, if this is not provided, and uh, we use this unique cameras PI skip uh, from the from KHM KHMR to calculate the the MACD size. So we have also whoops the the, the title is wrong. So we have also updated the, the input, uh, how the input is provided to the pipeline. Now you have this uh, sample sheet that it's a comma, comma separated values file with uh, the name of your sample and then the corresponding FASTQ files. If you have single end reads, you will provide this file and, uh, and then a comma without anything else. We will see this during the, the, the tutorial. And Yes. So, as I mentioned, this is a uh, this will provide you provide to the pipeline this uh, this uh, input file. Uh, just to mention one thing, uh, as I've been saying before, if you have kind of uh, annotation when with where you have one uh, and a second replicate, these two guys will be merged, and then all the uh, the that I mentioned before will be. Uh, done again, uh, and well, I didn't mention it before because I forgot. But the reason is that this way we gain uh, more or more coverage for if we want to perform fruit printing. Uh, and in the case of that, this any of these uh, samples are named exactly the same, then it's when they will be merged at the beginning of the pipeline at a sample level. Well, all of these we will discuss it during the pipeline. Uh, this is something that won't go uh, in the in the release of the pipeline in 2.0, but we want to do a follow up that will be 2.1. And what we will do is that <laughs> we will include the possibility of using controls for for attack seek. So normally people use controls for chip seek. This is the the conversation. Actually, here some people were. They cannot run the chip seek pipeline uh, without controls because they were using like all samples without controls, and then they were they, these people was using the attack seek pipeline. But now we're going to uh, implement uh, uh, an optional 
uh, an option to be able to run uh, a taxi with contours because Gabriel has seen that uh, the, the the number of peaks that were called uh, using these contours was actually uh, better that we thought in the case of WordPress. So in the case of a peak, a contour for a given sample will be uh, the genomic DNA from, from the sample that instead of, of having this terms possess uh, treatment is fragmented and, and has aggregated and, and is, sequences, uh, is sequenced along with the attack sample. So it will be like the, the background signal of the genome. Mm. What else? Mm. You know why sometimes it's not Ah, yes, and this is just a, a slide that I included uh, at the last moment. It's, because, it's just to show you because people were saying about people that maybe it's not so uh, familiar with bioinformatics and so on. One of the nicest things that NFCore provides you is that it provides you with a, a report at the end. So you can see this is just a snapshot of the report, but you can see here that there are like many sections of, of it. And I'm Going here, the section, corres the section corresponding to the uh, Homer peak annotation and where these uh, annotated peaks are, are falling in the genome. So there are for all uh, many of the, of the tools. So you will, when you run the NFCore at Axi pipeline, you will get uh, this report with uh, all these uh, nice uh, browsable uh, uh, figures. And I think that with this, I'm done. So yes, I just wanted to add that all these, so the pipelines that I mentioned of, of WordPress, both the ones that are just using NFCore as a standard, also the ones that are uh, using the poor NFCore pipelines and the ones that we have been adding to workflows to, to it will we are all available in the WordPress uh, GitHub repository. Here is also the, the site of, of WordPress in case to take a look and then there are here some resources in case you want to 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 see Nexo and to see documentation of Nexo, the NFCore website. There are many uh, tutorials and many videos there so you can take a look if you are interested and also you can join the Slack channels of both Nexo and NFCore in case you have questions and and so on. Yes, if you have any other question I'm, I'm happy to take it. <laughs>